Through this process, I have learned a great deal. Two things that really stand out to me are that I now know that I am an ally, yet it is still so clear that I have so much to learn. My name is Leah, and the tragic events of this last year, especially the racially motivated ones, like the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, had a huge impact on me. For that reason, I decided to focus my energy on being an ally to people of color. In order to gain perspective on this issue, I talked to many people of color on their thoughts on what allies should be like. I also spoke to allies to see if there was a general understanding of what that term meant. These people taught me the real definition of allyship, and also that we, as a community of allies, are still learning. But before I get into allyship and what I have learned, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I spent half of my life in a very diverse and liberal neighborhood in Brooklyn, where racism certainly existed, although one, night, one might not have been able to see so, so overtly. My friends were peers of all um, races and colors, and our parents all seemed to get along. So for the first formative part of my childhood, I was much less aware of racism and the importance of being an ally than I probably should have been. The veneer of liberalism can often prevent one from seeing below the surface. When I was nine, my family moved to Spain, where we have been living ever since. Despite a warm and welcoming culture, racism exists here as well. All of this is to say that when I was confronted with the, the news of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and others, it hit me in a dramatic and emotional way. I felt like I saw the world from a new perspective for the first time, and it upset me deeply. I experienced the question of what now as a real call to action for me, and I became super motivated to learning more, expressing myself, and trying to make a difference. Let's now focus on what it means to be an ally to people of color, the importance of being a real and effective one, and what it takes to do so. An ally is someone who wants to learn from and be supportive of those that have been mistreated and oppressed. An ally should be open to learning and understanding to the best of their abilities the impacts of racial injustice. I will get into what it takes to be able to do so later. As I mentioned, for research for this topic, I spoke to many people of color on their views on allyship. I also spoke to allies to see if they knew what this meant. These people taught me so much, the real meaning of an ally, but more poignantly, that we, as a community of allies, are still learning and may never truly understand what it is like from the perspective of those that we feel allied with. This leads to the point about self-awareness and honesty, but I will get into that later. One last point. For the sake of anonymity, I will not be using any real names. As you will see, all of the stories that I will tell are not mine. They are stories that have been told to me by people of color who have experienced or witnessed racism in their community. Nick and Laura, a biracial couple from upstate New York, told me a story about them recently going out to dinner. When they walked into the restaurant, Laura noticed that everyone was white, and she felt like she was getting unwelcoming and strange looks. Nick didn't notice this at first. When they were waiting and waiting to be served, someone yelled, Black Lives Matter, in an attempt to mock her. That's when it started to hit Nick. They weren't getting served because the people in the restaurant were racist and didn't want them there. When I asked Laura specifically about having an ally there, her husband, her responses were super interesting. She said she was grateful for the support that she did have, although she mentioned how nice it would have been to have others outside of their party speak up as an ally. At the same time, Nick's not noticing was striking to her, and we discussed what this meant. After reflection, what makes Nick a good ally is that he is sensitive to her and tries his best to pay attention, but not living the experience, and because of his white privilege, he often doesn't see things right away. As Laura, as Laura said, an ally may not react like she might, but is someone that is constantly open to learning new things. They taught me an, an important aspect of being an ally, that we need to pay attention in a new way and always be open to learning. The next story is another dramatic and upsetting one, and this taught me the importance of empathy in the context of being an ally. When Martin was in junior high school, 
He was one of only two other people of color in a total of 48 students. When the students would go out on the weekends and celebrate birthdays, everyone would be invited except for the three of them. He was then elected student body president, and he found out that his, his, his peers' parents had resistance and objections to him being in this position. We can all recognize how terrible this is, yet this points to another big understanding of being an ally. I asked Martin whether he felt like he had allies back then, people to talk to and express his feelings to. He said that he didn't and saw the situation as hopeless. He said that even if someone were to speak out about how the situation was wrong and it was wrong not to invite everyone, the subsequent invitation would, would not have been meaningful as the underlying problem would still have existed. While I can understand his feelings that nothing would have changed, we know from psychology how important it is to be vulnerable and to express your feelings to someone, especially someone who is trying to understand where you are coming from. One big takeaway here is that it is important to be empathetic in the context of being an ally and provide an ear to another. The next story I want to share um, is so common it has almost become a cliche. Nevertheless, it is still impactful when you hear it. When Will was driving his own car, doing nothing wrong in Louisville, Kentucky, he was pulled over at gunpoint by the police for doing what he describes as driving while black. Thankfully, nothing happened to him physically, although he describes this as an influential event that shaped his views on authority and inequality for the years to come. When we talked about what an ally could have done for him then or afterwards, his responses were again very insightful. He said that he also didn't have anyone to process his feelings with. He said that he was angry and unsure about how his emotions and thoughts would be received and accepted. He talks about this from an interpersonal point of view, although it occurs to me that it is deeper than that. I see listening and being open in this context as more than just providing an ear to another. One needs to be self-aware and be able to look inside oneself with honesty. We need to understand what we have been taught, explicitly and implicitly, in order to create a better place for listening in a non-judgmental and curious manner. It is only when we know ourselves well and are not defensive about what we will find that we can be affected by others' experiences, especially those different from ourselves. So from these interviews and all others, I have compiled a list of important aspects of being allies. Sensitivity and being able to pay attention with intentionality. Empathy. Self-awareness and true honesty, interpersonally and within ourselves. What I mean here is being able to have challenging conversations with ourselves and others with genuine honesty. And of course, be willing to, if and when you see something, say something, and always be on the right side of history. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is a list that I have compiled from all of the interviews, and we could all take these more into consideration in our daily life. What now is the organizing principle of this TED series? And I experienced this as a real call to action for me. Here are some things that we all have to do to be better allies. The concept of education came up through all of my interviews. It is clearly an issue that people don't recognize the these events, such as the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, as symptoms of a systemically racist society. This comes from the lack of education that there is on these topics. While I have been lucky enough to have teachers who engage in conversation about racial injustice, history is generally told by the victor, so there is not enough about racism and African American history from the perspective of people of color. A lot of people also talked about education, change coming through education, as it inspires others to want to take part in changing their community, like it did me. This need for more education is not specific to history, considering we are still dealing with these problems today. What I am suggesting is systemic educational reform, to acknowledge our troubled past and to include others and other viewpoints in the mainstream catalog. On another note, social media has been an important and crucial aspect of educating and raising awareness for the younger generation. Emily, a high school student in New York City, talked about how her school was making a conscious effort to get rid of racism on their campus. They created an Instagram account which she compared to the Me Too movement um, where students can 
talk anonymously speak about their experiences with racism. Platforms like this can help raise awareness and help allies get a better perspective on how to stand with people of color. Let me share one last story. Michelle a woman, is a woman who grew up in the 50s and 60s in Virginia, a time and place where there were not many allies. Cities were segregated by physical barriers like highways. Her mother worked in the hospital across the street from where they lived, but she was not allowed to give birth to her children there. They were forced to drive out of state. Michelle spoke about how it was the younger generation that was leading the civil rights movement, and that is something that she is pleased to be seeing again, although this time there are more allies involved. A lot of other people also spoke about how it is the younger generation that leads to more and different change. That is us. As the younger generation, we need to stand with people of color in their fight. I have been blessed to have people in my life that are teaching me how to do so. Thank you.